from the screens that you write down the text. We're going through the Bible today, a whole lot of text, Bible study at divine service. Write down the text. Go home, do your own research. The servant of the Lord tells us that many will stand in our pulpits with the hellish torch of Satan. So don't be quiet down there. Shut up the preacher. Isaiah chapter 4 and verse 1. The Bible says it there. And in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, We will eat our own bread. We will wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach. Our subject today is the missing color in the world's dress. What are we going to talk about today? The missing color in the world's dress. Oh, your head is endless. Pray. Mighty God of this universe. Today again, make me a nail upon the wall. Fast and secure it in its place. I find this thing so common and so small. How bright pictures of thy face. I'm saying, in essence, God, today, go before me. Do your work yourself. Be seen, be heard, be lifted up. As I open my mouth right now, I pray, oh God, that your voice will be heard in melodious yet powerful tones. That today all of us will come to know thee, whom to know is life eternal. This is my prayer in Jesus' name that everybody say. Amen. The missing color in the words of You know, I want to join with the Woodbridge family in saying a big welcome to those who are visiting with us today. Sister Janet. Great to have you today. Sister Wadana. Isn't that Sister Wadana? Great to have you today worshiping with us. And Sister Sandra, great to have you in the house today. And all my friends, Sister Nalfet is with us again today. Give the bread and the wave. We thought about you all week. Good to have you today. So the missing color in the war's dress. Today we are studying a remarkable prophecy. How do I know that this passage is prophetic? If you look at the first four words, in that day. Those four words are futuristic. They pointed to the future. So God showed to Isaiah something that would happen in the last days. And Isaiah wrote it down using those words. And in that day. The words there are similar to the ones used in Daniel 12 and verse 1. Look at those first four words. The Bible says what? And at that time. What is going to happen at that time, Daniel? Shall Michael stand up? The great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. So God 
So with my inquisitive mind, I must find out where is Zion that is being compared to a comely and a delicate woman. Or what is Zion that I say is comparing to a comely woman? and a delicate woman. And so let us go to the book of Psalm. Turn with me in your Bibles to Psalm chapter 87. Let us go there to Psalm chapter 87. Let us use this text. Where is the Zion? Isaiah says, I am likening, I am compared Zion to a comely and a delicate woman. Where is Zion? Isaiah 87, are you there? Psalm, I'm sorry, beautiful, you're following. Psalm 87, are you there? Beginning at verse 2, the Bible says, The Lord loveth the gates of where? The Lord loveth the gates of where? Zion. More than all the dwellings of Jacob. So Zion is a dwelling place. Are we together? Zion, God says, I love the gates of Zion more than the dwellings of Jacob. So Zion now is a dwelling place. So when the psalmist David in Psalm 100 and verse 4 said, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. He was talking about Zion. So Jeremiah likened or compared Zion, God's church, God's place of worship, to a coming and a delicate woman. And the point is rectified in verse 5. Look at verse 5, the Bible says. Let us read verse 5 together. The Bible says what? And of Zion it shall be said, This man, this and that man was born in him. Was born in where? In her. Look at verse 14. Verse 14 says, And to them 
Thomas Church endures persecution. The Bible says to the church was given to wings of an eagle. Now I learned that an eagle is the fastest flying bird. So the church given wings as eagle is simply telling us the speed with which God's church fled for its life from paper persecution. And the point is strengthened beautifully in verse 17. Let us read verse 17 together. The Bible says what? And the, who is the dragon? Who is the dragon? Satan. She was not. Roared with God's church. And he went to do what? To make war with the remnant of her seed which keeps the commandments of God and have the what? Testimony of Jesus. So the church that was persecuted who fled for its life was the church that keeps the commandments of God. They have the testimony of Jesus. So woman or woman will use prophetically represent what? Church or churches. So these seven women that God showed to my sin represent what? Represent what? Churches. Seven churches. But here is the big question. Why seven? Why not nine? Why not fifteen? Why not 100? Why, sir? Again, we are studying the prophecy. And in order to understand the prophecy, we must understand the prophetic language. Seven. The number seven. When used prophetically, it represents what? Completion. Complete. Completeness. So what God showed to Isaiah, in the number seven is that in the last day the complete body of Christian churches will take hold of one man. The last time I checked, it was 34,000 different Christian churches out there. I'm not talking about denominations. In total, I'm talking about Christian churches. God showed it to myself that such a time would come when there would be a wall of churches taking hold of one man. I said, What a God! Mighty God showed it to. Isaiah. Tough message today. But I present this message with, with love. I present this message with no arrogance. I, I am on God's business. And because it is in the Word of God, I'm going to tell you what God says. Are we together? Are we together? So we see 34,000 Christian churches. Everybody saying, my church is the right church. Who is the man that they are taking hold of? Jesus. But this is what Jesus said. This is what Jesus said. Jesus established only one true church. I establish only one. You don't believe me? Look at what the text says. The text said, Jesus talking to Peter, and I say unto thee that thou art who? Peter. A little stone, a little pebble. And upon this rock, right, point 
pointing to himself as the rock of ages. Yes. I will build my church well, singular, better. not churches. So I am not going back to the English language. Jesus originated the English language. And Jesus knows when to say church and when to say church is. I will build my church, singular, and the gates of hell Never. shall not prevail against it, it yes. not against them. Yes. So Jesus established one, two, two. one church. That church is built upon him. Jesus, I have another witness. Look at this one, John 10 and verse 16. The Bible says there, and other sheep I have, which are not of these four. Is that what the Bible says? The Bible says, other sheep I have, which are not of these four. Oh, yeah. Jesus was being very specific. Beautiful. 
the Bible says, Revelation 14 and verse 4, the Bible says, speaking about God's church, God's people, these are they which were not defiled with women. What does woman represent to them? So God is referring to a people who are not defiled with the bad doctrines of a particular church. Why? For they are what? For they are what? These are they which follow the Lamb, whether so ever he goeth. These were redeemed from men, being the want, first fruit unto God and to the Lamb. So God established one church. Yes, one church. This is the Bible. And this one church is built upon Jesus. And this one church is referred to as a virgin. We want to take a look now at all the other churches. Starting with the modern church. So God's church is referred to as what again? A virgin. Do you mind if I lose my jacket? So let us look at this other church. Revelation 17 and verse 1, the Bible says, And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, and I will show unto thee the judgment of the great war that sitteth upon many waters. So we are looking at another church. Remember, we are studying the what? Prophecy. And in prophecy, women represent what? Church. So we have looked at God's church, and God's church is built on Jesus, and it is referred to as a virgin and pure woman. But we are looking now at another church, and the Bible refers to this other church as a war. And you and I know that as far as the east is from the west, so is the difference between a war and a virgin. This other church, the Bible says she is a whore. And the Bible said that she sitteth upon what? Many waters. Now I told you I am not so versed with the English language, Pastor, but one of the things that I've learned is that water should never be itemized. Because it is not counted. So even if you have bottled waters, that water, what you called the bottles. But the Bible there refer to water as many. I wonder if the Bible is. Again, we are studying what? The prophecy. And in order to understand the prophecy, we must first understand the prophetic language. Water in prophecy. Represent what? Did you represent what? Are you are sure about that? Yes. Revelation chapter 17. What book did I say? Revelation, the 17th chapter. And I am looking at verse 15. Revelation 17 and verse 15. And the Bible says it there. Let us read it together. And then. Come on, you are not there in your Bible? Yes. Revelation 17, verse 15. Let us read it together aloud. The Bible says, yes. and, and he said unto me, What? Yes. The water which thou sawest, where the war sitteth. Are what? Are what? Are what? Are what? Multitude and nations and tongues. 
2 and verse 5. The Bible says, For there is only God, and one mediator between God and man. That is the man who? But this church that the Bible referred to as a war, they have their own mediation. Listen. Listen. When man sin, when man sin, four things happen. How many things happen when man sin? Four things. According to Genesis 2 and verse 17, man was now subjected to God. According to Isaiah 59 and verse 2, man was now separated from God. According to Genesis 3 and verse 8, man became afraid of God. Man heard the voice of God coming, and the Bible says, man went into hiding. And according to Genesis 3 and verse 10, when man sinned, man was stripped of God's righteousness. Four things I want to man. God in his wisdom wanted to restore man. God gave Moses special instructions in Exodus 25 and verse 8. God said to Moses, and let them build me a lot, sanctuary, that I may dwell among them. It was God's effort to bring man in one accord with himself like it was before man sinned. Now in that earthly sanctuary that God instructed Moses to build, God allowed a man to serve as mediator between himself and his people. So once a man said he would carry his lamb, the lamb was sacrificed, the blood was taken to the sanctuary's holy place. The priest would dip his finger in the blood and he would sprinkle it before the veil seven times. Then she would burn incense as, as a means of interceding on the people's behalf. But when Jesus died on the cross, focus on the second picture now. When Jesus died on the cross, the same hand, the same hand that wrote on the walls at a Benchetta party, leaning, leaning, DK, to Farsa, that same hand ripped the veil in pray. From top to bottom, signaling an end to the earthly ministration in the sanctuary. So, from that day when the veil ripped, God says, There is only one God and one mediator between God and man. That is the man. Christ Jesus. I tell you, I am presenting this message in love. But this is what has happened. Look at this other picture here. You will notice that this church promoted a man into the second apartment, which was occupied here by the Shekinah glory. So a man is now promoted in that place. And people go straight to that man at confession to confess their sins. Prerogatives that belong to God and God alone. that the people might also 
will have you as I can end it. Let us put it together and do this. The Bible says, and call no one in a spiritual sense upon the earth. For one is your father, which is in heaven. What does his apparel represent? His clothing. What does his clothes 
represent. They said, we will wear our own apparel. Revelation 19 and verse 8, the Bible says, and to her was granted that she should be arrayed in what? Fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the what? Righteousness of the saints. So they said, we will want your righteousness. You know why? God's righteousness is wrapped up in Psalm 119 and verse 172, which says what? My tongue shall speak of thy word for all thy commandments are righteousness. So we don't want your bread. We don't want your righteousness. Only let us be called Christians. Listen, there is a missing color in Christendom today. God's church, when he instructed Moses to build the sanctuary, God's church has colors. And those colors have meaning. But the war and the reporters also have colors. But there is a missing color in the board's dress. We want to find out which color is missing. Then we want to take a look at why was that color omitted. Then finally we want to look at the meaning of that missing color. So God's church has colors. The war and her harlot daughters also had colors. Let us look at God's colors now. Exodus 26, verse 1, the Bible says, let us read together, help me to read, the Bible says, moreover, thou shalt make what? The tabernacle with what? Ten curtains of fine twine linen. What are the colors? Of blue, what? Purple and what? Scarlet with cherubims of cunning work. Shalt thou make them. So God instructed Moses, give me the sanctuary. These must be the colors in my sanctuary. Blue, purple, red, fine twine linen. Verse 36 says, and thou shalt make an hanging for the door of the tent. What must be the color of blue and purple and scarlet and fine twine linen wrought with needlework? So God's colors, blue, purple, red, and note which color comes first at the time? The blue. Exodus 35 and verse 23, the Bible says, and every man with who was found which color? Purple, scarlet, and fine linen, and goat's hair, and red skin of rams, butter skin, they brought them. So, what are God's color? Blue, purple. The, the white is missing, the fine, fine linen should be there. But blue, purple, scarlet, they wore and their daughters also have colors. But there is a missing color in the world's dress. I wonder why that color is missing. Let us proceed. Revelation 17, verses 3 and 4. The Bible says, looking at the world's dress, the Bible says, so he carried me away into the spirit, into the wilderness, and I saw a woman, a church, sit upon a scarlet colored beast full of the name of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in what color? In purple and scarlet. So there is a missing color. Which color is missing? The blue is missing. God's colors are out again. But the war's dress is only purple 
and scarlet. The war is purple, purple, scarlet. What does the purple represent? It represents royalty. The purple tells us that Jesus is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. They have accepted that to some extent. What does the red represent? The red represents the sacrifice of Jesus. Jesus shed blood on Calvary's cross. To some extent, they have accepted that. So much so that if you pay with some of these people, they will blow you up. They will tell you that the blood is against you. The like blood is not against anybody. The blood was shed to ransom mankind. But the blue is missing. I wonder why. Let us look at the meaning of the blue. What does the blue represent? That they have omitted. Numbers 15, reading from verse 38, the Bible says, Speak unto the children of Israel and beat them that they make them fringes in the border of their garments throughout their generation, and that they put upon the fringe of the border a ribbon of which color? Blue! And it shall be unto you for a fringe. Verse 16 says, 
and thou shalt do what? Put into the ark what? The testimony. What is the testimony again? The Ten Commandments. So God says, put the Ten Commandments into the ark, which I shall give thee. The nominal churches said the Lord is done away with. God said to Moses, put it in the ark. Verse 21. And thou shalt put the mercy seat above upon the ark. And in the ark thou shalt put the Ten Commandments. So God said, put the commandments in the ark. Put the mercy seat above the ark. Verse 22, and there I God will meet with thee and will commune with thee from above the mercy seat. In other words, the mercy seat or the ark, it represents. Can I move it? It represents God's cheer. Are we together? Yes. God said to Moses, Put my Ten Commandments in the ark, put the, ten, the, the mercy seat above the ark and from above the mercy seat I God will commune with the so the ark then I'm going to leave my last seat Where is the ark today? Where is the ark? What is in the ark again? The Ten Commandments. What is above the ark? The mercy seat. And who sits on top of the ark? In the sanctuary, the Shekinah glory, which will present the Father, will meet with Moses. But where is the ark today? I was talking to a rusty man, and he told me that it is in Ethiopia. And I said, it's all it gets there. And he said, it, it, it travels through me there. Where is the ark today? Revelation 11 and verse 19, John says, And the temple of God was open where? In heaven. And there was a seen in his temple. The what? The ark of his testament. So the ark is in heaven. Are we together? And there were lightnings and voices and thunderings and an earthquake and great hail. So the ark of God is in heaven. With God's Ten Commandments and God the Father sitting on top of the mercy seat. So they say the law is done away with. I know the one of her that, that the law is done away with. In order to destroy God's law, you will have to do the impossible. You know what you will have to do? You will have to take a trip up there to heaven. Now, this is madness of the highest kind. So just there with the preacher. You will have to take a trip up to heaven. And if you manage to reach up there before you can get to the Father who sits on the throne, you first you have to encounter self hymns and cherub hymns, and some of them are warning angels. But, 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 but say that you are bad. You get past all of those. Things and show this, then you will have to enter the throne room of grace and glory. 
before you get still yet to God's commandment, you would have to be with a fine agenda. By the name of Jesus. Satan tried that. The Bible says that Jesus did not only really beat him up, but him out. Yeah. Yeah. But Satan kicked him out of hell. But say you are bad, you are bad, you are super bad. I speak as a fool. But say you are bad and you get past Jesus. Hold him in the throat and you give Jesus a stand up. Forgive me, Lord. <laughs> so you get past Jesus in order to get to the commandment. Then you have to go to the Father. And if you go up there as a sinner, then you are going to come soon. How would you get up? Because he is consuming fire. Source him. Are we together? But say that you are covered. Oh my. So, so, so you are concerned that I speak as a fool. Are we together? I just hear me all sister. So you manage now to, to, to do whatever. To get past the consuming fire. And you get to the big and mighty God the Father. You do what the Lord have mercy for this madness, but you remove the father. Still yet, before you get to the Ten Commandments, the mercy seat. you have to remove the mercy seat. And if you manage to remove the mercy seat, then there is where all the cookie comes. Their everything will come to an end. They are all of us because we are sinners. Would drop dead. Listen, it is because of God's mercy. Why we are not consumed. They are new every morning. Where is God's faithfulness? To remove the mercy seat, there is where it all. Mercy, God. Judgment, God. Beloved friends, God's Ten Commandments stands for us. God is a church on this earth, a church that keeps the commandments of God. The testimony of Jesus it is a church that the enemy is man with. I put this to you today because it's the day, brethren. Yes. Salvation for me is not about massive and crew. And, 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 and my, my method to be saved is similar to that of Joshua. If you notice, Joshua's statement. Joshua did not say, Pastor, as for my house and I. Joshua said, as for me. So he was sure about himself. As for me. And if my family chose to come. So I want to be saved. So far I have searched. And if you can show me another truth. Then I will leave this church and join yours because I want to be saved with the God's kingdom. But until then, this is God's church. And see them before the hypocrites. This is God's church. Beloved friends, no, we have baptism and power is in it. But I still want you to say, Sister Nesta, and I still want to call somebody to pray for you today. You are still inviting me. We're going to have baptism. 